Hello designers and welcome to your Onshape Crash Course Part 1. This video is aimed at teaching you the basics of Onshape. So by now, you should already have your student accounts activated and you have access to your Onshape just like you see here. Let's get started right away. Click the plus icon here to create a new document. Give a name to your document. Click the Create button. Give it some time to load. This is a great opportunity to talk about panic clicking. In Onshape, you need to click things really slowly and intentionally, whether you're using a mouse or your finger. Try not to tap too many times because Onshape might freak out. All right, Onshape is now open. And as you can see, we're presented with the Onshape window. Let's take a moment to talk about this bar. Firstly, you can see here in the middle, this is your 3D workspace and you're presented with some initial planes for you to design around. These planes are also indicated right here in the left panel. Anything you do in Onshape, whether it's a sketch or an extruded feature, will be logged right here on the left panel. The cool thing about Onshape is, if you make a mistake and you've already done a, several operations, you can always go back, tweak the mistake, and then it will update everything uh, in sequence. If you do not see this panel, you need to click this button. This is to show and unhide the panel. Always keep this panel open. Next, we have the view queue. In Onshape, you can rotate the view, but while you're working, it sometimes gets really crazy. You get on the underside of your model, and then you don't know how to get back to a nice view to continue modeling. Here's a trick. Tap the view queue and click isometric. Isometric view is a great view to come back to, so you'll hear me refer to it as the home view. Another thing to take note is that Onshape opens with inches as its default unit. You might want to change this to millimeters. So to do that, you come up to this information icon, click units, and change the length option here to millimeters. Click done. Now any measurements you see presented in the window will be in millimeters. Let's get started. First, we're going to open our sketch tool tray. The first thing it asks for is where you want to draw your sketch. Initially, we're going to choose a plane, but you can also draw on surfaces and faces of 3D objects you made. In this case, we're going to choose the top plane, which represents the floor. Immediately, you see the tools for sketching. In Onshape, you always sketch something first and then pull it into 3D. And there's some amazing tools here that you will learn. To start with, we're going to choose center point rectangle. Very carefully, tap this center origin dot in the middle of the document. Now, tap somewhere on the outside. You've just created a rectangle. The reason we've initially clicked this black dot is because later on, we're going to do some mirror commands, and we want to make sure that our 3D model is centered. We know we're in the sketch when you see the lines are blue. If I were to finish this sketch by clicking this check icon, the lines are black. I can no longer edit this sketch unless I go back into it. As mentioned before, you can see that the sketch that we just made is logged on the left panel. To go back into it, you click these three dots and you tap edit. Now the lines are blue again and we can continue editing. The first thing we're going to do is go back into our sketch tools and choose dimension. Very carefully, tap one of the lines here and a number will appear. Tap the number and we're going to put in our first measurement, 233. Three. Notice that it says MM here. If it doesn't, tap it and choose MM. Once done, click the green checkmark icon. Dimension tool was the last tool that we used, so it appears up here and it's still active. So let's choose this line now, tap the number, and we're going to type in 65 mm. Click the green check mark. Great, we're done with our first sketch, so we can finish it. Let's pull this sketch into 3D. For 3D features, we click this icon, and there are some amazing features in this tray. We're not going to be learning all of them in this course, but we're going to be learning the basics. The most common one you'll be doing is called extrude. It's the first option. Tap it. And now tap the sketch that you've done. 
Make sure you click the area of the sketch, not the line. And as you can see, it's trying to pull it into 3D. When you enter an extrude operation, a dialog box opens here. It might be collapsed like this. You can pull it up to see more options. For now, we're going to leave this as new. But just to show you, if I tap this, there are some other operations we can do. Let's go back. We're going to set the depth of this extrude to 50 mx. And now we can finish the extrude. As you can see, the extrude has appeared here. And what's interesting to note is every time you make an extrude from a sketch, Onshape auto hides the sketch. More on this later. Let's make a new sketch. Sketch tools. And this time, instead of choosing a plane, let's choose the surface of the back of this block. You want to look flat on to the sketch. Right now, we're still in this isometric view. Let's change the view to face right. I'm going to tap the view cube and click right. Now we're ready to draw a sketch. If I pinch and zoom, I can zoom in and out using two finger pinch. Let's choose the line tool. And we're going to tap this point right here where the center line intersects with our block. This is why we drew our initial rectangle using the origin. Everything now is equal on both sides. And Onshape does a good job of guessing what you're trying to click. So if I tap here, it automatically chooses that intersection point. And then I'm going to tap directly below it to create a vertical line. Let's add a dimension to this line. Sketch tools, dimension, carefully tap the line, tap the number, and we're going to type in 21 mm. Click the green check mark. What we've created now is the center point to create a circle that will be the canister hole for the CO2 canister placed in the back of the car. So let's go into Sketch Tools and create a center point circle. Now that we have this point 21 mm down, we can tap this point, tap anywhere out to create a circle. But this circle is way too big. So let's go back to Sketch Tools, Dimension, Carefully tap the blue line of the circle, tap the number, and we're going to put in 18 mm. Finish the sketch. That looks really good. While we're here, let's add the groove at the bottom of the car that allows the tether line to be placed on hooks. Sketch tools, center point rectangle. Carefully tap this black dot, the origin. Click anywhere outside, and let's set some dimensions. Sketch tools, dimension. For this horizontal line, we're going to tap it, tap the number, and insert 6 mm. My dimension tool is still active. For the vertical line, we're going to tap it, tap the number, and type 12 mm. That looks good. So we're going to finish the sketch. Notice we did two sketches in one sketch. That's totally fine. I'm now going to change my view back to isometric view by tapping the view cube and selecting isometric. Please remember to get into the habit of always coming back to isometric view because sometimes your rotations can get wild. So isometric is a great way to do that. I'm going to pinch the zone to see this area more clearly. And now I'm going to extrude. So I'm going to go into my 3D features, click extrude, and I'm going to carefully tap the area of this circle. And as you can see, it's trying to make an extrude. But we want to cut inwards, not add to the object. So we're going to tap add and set it to remove. Set the depth to 52 mm. Once you're done with that, finish the sketch. Notice that the previous sketch that we made has now become hidden. To show it again, click the eye icon. We are now going to extrude the groove. 3D features, extrude. Tap this square and make sure to tap the other square as well. Set it to remove. I'm going to pinch to zoom out. 
And instead of putting in a measurement, I'm just going to grab this arrow and pull it all the way outside to the other side of the block. Finish the extrude. Now we have a block with a groove for the tether line as well. Tap the cube, go back to isometric. The last step in this chapter is to create a guideline. We're going to change the view to front view, create a new sketch, tap the side surface of this block. Instead of choosing center point rectangle, we're going to take a normal corner rectangle this time. Tap it. Carefully tap the bottom corner of the block right here that's nearest to the chamber hole that we just created. Now tap the top edge of our block. Go to Sketch Tools, Dimension. Tap only this top line here, this horizontal line. Tap the number, and we're going to insert 210mm. Finish the sketch. This step created a line right here as a reference point because the actual front of your car starts here and goes backwards this way. This block is actually attached into the CNC machine to CNC mill your car out of foam. So we want to keep this here just for the machine to grab onto. The real front of your car comes from this line backwards towards the chamber hole. Let's have a look at what we've created. So now we have a precision block up to the measurements of F1 in schools ready for our car modeling. Well done, and thank you for listening. In chapter two, we're going to learn about the spline tool and how to start actually cutting the shape of your car.